All right, we're good. I think it starts every time, man. Oh, baby. Ben starting every time. At some point, she'll give out. Ted's boat taxi surface. Dylan and Ted are going way down river here to the first spot that we scouted when we got to Missouri. It was hot that night. We were in the Cuckleburrs and we saw several bucks and does. They're going way back up in there. And Grant and I are going right back in the same spot where we found all those big fresh rubs. We found one rub line leading right through the center of this peninsula. And on either side of it, we scouted the thing from one side to the other. And that's the only buck sign that we found in this whole thing. And I know those bucks are back there because I saw them the other night. So Grant and I are gonna get on that rub line and follow it straight in back into some thicker bedding on some ridges. We followed the rubs down in here and they eventually petered out. But once we got to the head of this ditch, there's a big rub right behind me, about 20 yards from this tree. There's also a couple trails coming through right here. So I think we're gonna give this a shot. I like that we can see out down this cove pretty good ways too. All right guys, we're getting ready to go back into the same cove that we scouted the first night when we were up here and watched a handful of does, a small buck and a definite shooter buck up in there. We think there's a lot of deer piled up at the end of this cove. I'm guessing it'll be pretty still tonight, which means the deer are gonna be really nervous and it's gonna be hard to get away with a whole lot. So we're just gonna be super slow, super quiet getting up in there. Hopefully we get something for you guys. Those bucks are right there. Our wind is going like this, straight out of the south. We're just try gonna try and follow the cove up and sneak up by them. Decide once we're there, if we want to try and get up past them, get set up in a tree, or if we just want to set up with the ghillie suits. surprise. 
surprise us over here. She got right here 25 yards and act like she smelled something and took off. The forecast was calling for south wind and when we hung the stand it was coming straight up this ditch. But I think what's happening is the thermals are switching and they're falling down this ditch now. We gotta get out, Grant. This ain't gonna work because if a buck comes through there he's gonna smell us before we ever even get a chance. It's going right down there. set up up this little drainage a doe and a little buck came by and that doe got to 30 yards and just wigged out and I couldn't figure out what was going on so I dropped milkweed and the thermals are pulling down towards this lake back here you see the water over my shoulder thermals are pulling right down this ditch behind me and going in there Grant set up back there to film I could see a couple other deer back across this cove of the lake
Mm -hmm. okay. Do I get up? I don't know. Bubbles in this blood right here. What? Bubbles in this blood. He's bleeding actually pretty decent. I mean we're ten yards away from the where he was when he standing when I shot him. There's a little bit of bubbles in it, but it's a little darker than I would like to see. I'm like excited but I'm nervous, man. We're gonna back out and go get Warb and Grant in the boat. And then we'll be back probably trying to find him. Is that an arrow? No, but we found blood. Found blood? Mm-hmm. We got any cliff bars over there running around? I ain't trying to eat anything right now. Nice catch. Arrow's right here. Yep. Do, do. He's going right in front of this bush. Yeah, he was on the left of that bush for me. But that's the tree where the blood's on. His leg's kind of forward there, which is good. It hit him solid. Guys, we're dealing with a situation that a lot of you can potentially relate to. Basically, all you had to go off of at the shot was the sound and then the blood on the ground. Right. right. In this case, there's a branch obstructing Ted's view, you know, from the camera. So we can't tell where exactly the arrow hits the deer from video. Right. But most people can't because they're not filming their hunts in the first place. So a lot of times this is all they're left with is just the sound that the arrow made. And they hear it one time. And you hear it one time. Right. In this case, we can listen to it again. But my first impression is that the deer's dead, that you got a diaphragm hit and like it's a perfect shot. That's what I think. Could be wrong. Been wrong before on these deals. They, they've been, been on some rodeos. Yeah. So 
we're going to be very, very careful about it. We're going to give him solid at least two or three more hours. Shot him around seven. We're going to wait until at least one to go in there. I got to run over to Ken's ranch though and see if I can borrow his deer cart. Yeah, me and, me and Grant will get mentally prepared. Yeah. You guys are. <laughs> oh, you mentally gonna... prepared on some tortilla chips, huh? <laughs> All right, we'll go get that stuff and then hopefully go find a buck. I hope so. It's gonna be sweet. Oh, Ted, man, I'm gonna lose more of my hair. Yeah, you're losing. If I get any more stressed out, I'm gonna lose. Oh man. Well, issue number one. How does that happen? A one wheel wonder. Cotter pin must have come out. Only about 500 yards in. Got back to the house a while ago, asked my stepbrother Travis if we could borrow his cart, and he said, sure. <sighs> yep, might be buying Travis a new cart. <laughs> You've been pulling that thing for 100 yards without a wheel. Dead calm. He's had plenty of time to die if the hit was a little bit further back than what you anticipated, but since we don't know exactly where you hit, we gotta go really, really slow. And we'll just make a determination once we track for 15, 20 yards on whether or not we need to keep going. Yeah, I don't see blood spraying out of both sides by any means. A.M. right now. We slid up there. We got on the blood. We went about 25 yards or so. And I still had blood when we stopped, but just want to be extra careful because we don't know exactly what to do and hit this thing. There's a fair amount of it starting out. And it's hard for us to tell if Dylan got a pass through or not. We'll give him some time and then slide back in there. A couple more hours. been about 13 hours now since you shot the buck. We left here this morning about 3 a.m. and I've marked last blood up there with some teepee and it's still fairly cool. It got down in the 50s last night so we're gonna go up there to last blood and just creep in there. for some time. Looks like dark blood on the arrow. Blood right up here ahead. Sure we didn't cross this fence. How high that is. Hope not. You did. There's blood right there. <sighs> now we got a bit of a predicament here. This is private land over there. We shot him a few hundred yards into public, but we're going to have to find the landowner, contact him, and see if it's okay for us to pursue the deer. You got Onyx pulled up on your phone? I need to load the landowners and I didn't save that earlier. Let's see if we can find a phone number for him. Hello? Hey, how's it going? This is uh, Aaron Warbritton. 
I'm from Iowa. We're down here in Missouri doing some bow hunting on some public land and a guy in our group shot a nice buck last night and he's run over onto your property. I was going to see if you'd mind if we pursued him over there. Yeah, we tracked blood right up to your fence and then he jumped over your fence and was headed into your property. Okay. Okay, thanks a lot. Yep, we'll let you know if we get him. Alright, you too. We're good to go. That was way easier than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Pretty nice about it. Yeah, he was. Tad, get over here, you little. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Warm. Thank you. First boba. Great. First boba. Right there. That's, That's pretty cool. That's a heck of a first boba. <laughs> oh, man. I had not a good feeling at all. Let's I'm flip him over that. and see where you, where you hit him at. Yeah, that's crazy. That one threw us for a loop. I mean, I knew I hugged that shoulder. Oh, man. The thing ran right in here and died immediately. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I mean, the last blood up there that I was following for the last 20, 30 yards, it just pin drops. It's small, like not yeah. much blood at all. Top but I did see bubbles in it. Or... Yeah. <laughs> I'm super pumped for you. Oh, that's God. a beautiful deer. Yeah, it is. awesome. Between every, everything that we saw, it was like, didn't look real good. No, it didn't look like that at no, all. It didn't look like that. That was the thing, when I saw that you didn't get much penetration on your arrow, I'm like, well that wouldn't make sense if he hit, hit the liver. Yeah, and I was thinking. deflected or something like that. The only thing at that point that was going through my mind is if I hit like the brisket or something like that. Oh yeah, it went right to the, <laughs> scap it went right to the scapula and the shoulder. Yeah. Oh man. Missouri's been good to us. It has Missouri been. has been good to us. Tears I wish we could have found him last night, but it was cool enough. He'll be fine as so long as we get him taken care of here pretty quick. Yeah. Well, we drug him up out of there and actually pulled him back over here onto the public land to gut him quick. And the landowner was actually gracious enough to let us drag the deer out on his property which will save us a bunch of time it's supposed to get up to 80 today so we want to go ahead and get this thing gutted out as quickly as possible and get some ice in him we'll recap the hunt for you guys a little bit later but right now I got to run get the truck and Grant's got to grab the deer cart while the boys get this deer cleaned up so we can get him out of the woods Nice of that guy to let us come through his property. Yeah. The landowner told me exactly how to just drive the truck back here. He said, just as long as you shut the gates. It's like, all right, works for me. We brought this buck back to camp so y'all could get a little better look at him. We had to get him out of the woods as, as quickly as we could. The boys dressed him while I ran back to town, got some ice, and then met him in the field. And we put a bunch of ice in him and got him cooling down now. It's supposed to be 80 today, but it's still in the low 70s right now and take a few pictures and stuff and then we'll get him to town yeah yep. he was hit better than we thought so he was dead longer a lot yeah. longer he thought probably dead right away but yeah hindsight's 2020 with that i mean the blood didn't suggest where the hit was at all really and i thought it was dark and that it was a liver hit yeah i mean been wrong a lot of times on yeah. blood trails yeah. and yep. in this situation we couldn't see the hit couldn't we didn't find the arrow until today yeah. yeah. And we had very little blood to go off of, you know, so we didn't want to push the deer. Yeah, I mean, everything that we saw with the blood trailing was 
not suggesting a double lung hit really. What tricked us though is that there was no exit wound. Right. You just went through that offside scapula, shoulder, yeah, and into the vitals. Right. So there was very little blood to be had mm -hmm. without the exit. Mm -hmm. But pretty sweet. You got your first buck with a bow. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's pretty awesome. You were excited. <laughs> I was I was the roller coaster last night. I mean, it was like right away I shot and like I've been trying to be a lot better lately as a hunter of like maintaining my calm until like I know that the deer is down. I shot and we even lucked it on video. It looked like I just saw somebody die, but I was like trying to co try to compose myself. And this is the same buck we saw when we were scouting the other night. Yep. yep first night we got here when it was a million degrees and we yep. were down there scouting getting tore up by mosquitoes i'm pretty sure this is the same exact buck that we saw in there yeah yep, i would say so ted and i set up right where we saw him come out that night and he came out like directly behind us and i mean that's pretty much the big reason that like the shot wasn't on video which but i mean i guess it all worked out in the end yep. yeah so it was pretty pretty sweet we thought it was possible that you got a pass through and we didn't find this arrow until this morning. 100 grain fixed thunderhead on there. I don't know, 40% of the arrow is covered in blood. So what I'm assuming happened is you went through the scapula and you hit that offside bone. Yeah, yeah. offside of the chest cavity bone or whatever it was. Yeah. yeah, I can remember like right away he was quartered to like pretty hard and then I just tried to be patient and like let him keep working to get a more broadside shot and then when he did I just was sure that I was trying to hug that shoulder and put it right up in that triangle as best I could and hit him perfect it did yeah, yeah hit him perfect smoked him one thing I would say you know what to take away from this hunt as far as learning goes be cautious with the blood trail especially if you don't know where you hit the deer the other thing I would say is use lighted knocks if you have them because that's just one more thing that you can go off of you it yep. that that immediate hit is so important in those mm -hmm. fleeting seconds right afterwards is so important to determine what the heck even happened mm -hmm. still ended up with him yeah so <laughs> pretty sweet that's a, this is awesome he's pretty pretty cool we ted and i noticed there's a big new rub there that hadn't been there when we scouted that other night yep. and he actually came up right next to it but that's, I'm guessing, what all this stuff is. I think that's kind of the coolest part of it. It's just the character stuff like that. It's yeah, pretty sweet. Yeah, he's got that big split yeah. line on that right side. Yeah, that's, that's sweet. That's awesome. He's a pretty but, buck, man. I'm super happy for you. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, just thanks to these guys, you know, like I've been, been dreaming about doing this since I was a kid with these guys, and now that I'm finally here and it happened, it's, it's pretty, pretty awesome, so. Can't thank Aaron and everybody here enough for for letting me come along with them this year. <laughs> Bucket hat strikes two years yeah. in a row. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You getting the struck blood? You getting once. the tag, Ted? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> you said, yeah. Heck yeah. You got a spot picked out for the evening? Yeah.